Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really excited to talk to you and tell you something about our Be It Honours language education program. So for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to um, talk to you firstly about fairly boring stuff, the structure of the program, and you can also um, look that up uh, in the yearbook. And then I'm going to talk about more exciting stuff, which um, are the various research projects that's, that our students do. So firstly, why do we have a language education program? And the reason for that is that originally in the broad um, Be It Honours program, we had three uh, language modules, uh, Afrikaans, English, and Isikosa. So for students who were interested in language education or language teachers, they had in this very big program, they had, um, if they specialized in one particular language, they had one uh, module that they could focus on. And we felt that that was a little limiting. So we wanted to give the students a broader range of language-related modules, and in that way, focus specifically on language teaching. So that's what we did. In 2009, the program, the program ran for the first time, and we had five students. And so this year, we have uh, approximately 20 students. And that might not sound like a lot in 10 years, from five to 20. Um, but in fact, these 20 students that are registered this year were selected from 50 applications. So the program is growing. And in fact, at this point, we are struggling to manage the research projects because, of course, um, the research project take, takes up quite a lot of time and um, supervision from our side. Right. So the most important point about this program is that it is the first step in the ladder to a postgraduate degree. The honors program is not a program that will give you tips or tricks for teaching. It is about researching language learning and teaching. And in that sense, we see the Be It Honors as actually the first year of your master's. Because towards the end of the program, you will conduct a research project. You will write up that project. And that is, in fact, kind of the beginning of a master's study. So if you really work hard and you can finish the program in a year, you can use your research project as the basis for a research proposal in the very next year and continue with your master's. That is the way we look at, um, at our honors programs. And I'm hoping that you find this prospect exciting, that you are actually not starting with an honors program, but actually giving the first step on the way towards a master's and eventually a PhD. Right, so let's talk about the structure of the program. Uh, you know that you can do the program over one year or over two years. So normally um, it, the, the program is structured in such a way that the first semester or the first year is quite busy, it's packed. Um, and the, that, the reason for that is so that you have in the second semester or in the second year, you have more time for your research project. Right, so if you study in one year, and remember um, this information you can also see in the yearbook, um, you have compulsory first semester modules. And those modules start off with more broad modules that all the BA Honours students do. It's the research module, educational research, and then um, the knowing, acting, and being module. It focuses on um, the study of education in general. So all Be It Honours students, students take that um, those two modules. Then there is a module specifically for language education research. It's a much um, smaller module, but it equips you with the skills to do the kind of research that we focus on in language education. Um, and then the final a compulsory module in the first semester. Remember, this is for when you study over one year. Um, the final compulsory module is language policy and multilingual education. Look, we know all our classes are multilingual. So even if you, you are at the poshest English medium school, many of your learners will be speakers of other languages. So we want you to realize that, um, that reality 
and to prepare you for um, the challenges of multilingual education. Right, then you need to choose um, specific modules. And in the first semester, you choose between um, one of the three languages that we offer. So English, Afrikaans, or Isikosa. So one of those you need to choose, and this is also in the first semester. In the second semester, you again have two groups from which you have to choose one um, module each. So um, the, sec the, the um, first, second semester grouping is literacy and education leadership. This is a module specifically for the foundation phase teachers and then teaching creative writing. So one of those you have to choose. Then the second group in the second semester is pedagogical lexicography. So lexicography has to do with the study of dictionaries and the use of dictionaries in the classroom. And then a specialization in language and literacy. So the specialization in language and literacy will not be offered in 2020. What we are doing instead is a module on digital literacy and digital pedagogy for language learning and teaching. So that's a very exciting module. It's a brand new module. And we want to see um, whether we have enough students who are interested in that um, direction in language learning and teaching. And we hope many of you will be because basically that's the future. Right. So if you study over two years, the structure is basically the same, but just spread over two years then. So um, in the first year of study, you have those two compulsory modules again. So you're going to have um, the knowing, acting, and being a module, which you will do with all the um, other BA Honours students, and then the language policy and multilingual education module. Right. And then um, you again, for that first year, you have to choose from those three groups. Um, again, Afrikaans, English, or Isikosa. Um, and then in the second semester, remember this is now the second semester of the first year, you have to choose between, again, literacy education leadership, the foundation uh, phase module, and teaching creative writing. And then the second group is again pedagogical lexicography and specialization in language and literacy, or in 2020 it will be di digital literacy um, and pedagogy for language learning and teaching. Right, so you can see again that the first year is quite packed to leave the um, educational research project for the second year. So in the second year, you will then do um, educational research and language education research, and then you will do your project. So in that second year, just like in the second semester, if you do it over one year, you will focus on your research project. So you can see um, the research project takes up almost half of your course. So it is obviously um, quite important because, as I said, this is the first step on the road to a postgraduate career. Right. Um, what is interesting um, is that from 2018 onwards, we also now have um, Isikosa students who are taking that particular module and uh, specializing in that language. And we are really excited about that development. Right, so let's get to the more interesting stuff. And those are the research projects. I want to give you a taste of the kinds of research projects that students have been doing so far and that they are doing this year, just to give you an idea of the kinds of problems that you might be willing to investigate. Um, maybe it's important to say at this point that um, when you choose a particular subject or a particular topic that you will be assigned to a specific lecturer because we specialize and we can't all do everything. So um, it, it could happen that your topic will have to be adapted because maybe one lecturer already has three or four students. So that would be if to add another student would be too, too much for that lecturer. Then we work on your topic and we adapt it a little so that one of the other lecturers can uh, manage it. Okay, so in the past, um, we've had um, a study on creativity. Remember, one of the modules is creative writing, and this student looked at how creativity is conceptualized in the CAPS documents. So you will see that many of these topics are conceptual studies. In other words, they don't uh, necessarily collect data from 
human research participants. If you want to collect data from research participants, then we have to get ethical clearance, and that is quite a long process. So we try and steer you in the direction of more conceptual research, but of course it's more than possible to do research with uh, teachers. We do not allow honor students to do research with learners because remember, this is like an apprenticeship. This is your first attempt at research, so we, um, we would rather that you experiment on the teachers than on the learners. And it is easier to get ethical clearance to do research with uh, adults than with children. Okay, so that was the first study, a conceptualization of creativity. Because you know, um, we all talk about creative writing and we give marks for creativity, but what is it actually? And that's what the student did. She looked at the literature and then she looked at CAPS to, to figure out what is actually meant by creativity. Um, then we had a topic um, by a student who worked on corrective feedback. You know, when you mark essays or when you mark the student's work, especially in, higher, uh, um, in, in the high school, you are supposed to note the errors and then you are supposed to structure your grammar lessons around those errors. So this student looked at how teachers do corrective feedback, how they um, show the learners what the errors are, maybe correcting them or underlining them or something like that and then how they deal with these errors in class. So that was a study focused on the teachers. So he interviewed the teachers to find out how they do this. Um, and then there are quite a number of um, students who work on reading. And you can imagine reading is a huge problem with learners who don't uh, read well or don't comprehend what they are reading. Um, and so this year there are two students who are working on reading, they're looking at the demands of CAPS in terms of reading in the intermediate phase. And then they look at, the one student is looking at um, textbooks, whether the textbooks actually meet the requirements of the CAPS documents. And the other student is looking at the comprehension tests that teachers set. So she's analyzing these tests to see whether the questioning in those tests remain at a very low level. So um, that's another conceptual study. Then we have students focusing on the use of digital media in the classroom. Um, this year we have a student who um, is working on the use of electronic media to improve Afrikaans home language learners' creative writing abilities. So that's linking the electronic with the creative writing. Um, our two Isitkoza students are working on um, the challenges that Isitkoza speakers have, or is it because our learners, when they have to be taught English first additional language. Um, and then also teachers lived experiences with um, teaching science to learners in a language that they really don't know very well, in other words, in English. Right. Um, and then we've got another um, student focusing on electronic media. And he is looking at senior phase language learners, language teachers lived experiences of introducing coding and robotics. Right, so that's a very interesting um, topic. If you are at a school that uses um, electronic media to actually teach coding or teach robotics, then, you know, obviously this is something really worth investigate, investigating. It is at the forefront of research into language teaching and learning. Right, um, so I hope you feel inspired by these topics. They, there is such a wide range of topics that you can cover. So have a look in your classrooms, think about the problems that you've experienced, the challenges that you have. Think about what question can you formulate around those problems because those are the problems that you then can research and that you can investigate. So. We are really looking forward to seeing you on campus, and I hope you are ex as excited as we are to continue on this journey of the Beard Honours Language Education. Goodbye. <laughs>